Hi, I'm Lou Manfredini, and welcome to another episode of House Smarts. You know, after a long, harsh winter, we are all just chomping at the bit to get outside. Pretty soon, all of this sod is going to be lush and green. But when it comes to your lawn, you can't just throw some seed and fertilizer down there and expect great results. You need the right information. Well, today's show is all about getting your lawn and garden green this year and beyond. A lush green lawn is something we all aspire to have. I know I do. But you have to go down into the soil to really get to the root of the issue. Here with me today to help explain it is Chuck Warpinski. He's with Central Sod. There's a fair amount of science and work that goes into making green sod. Yes, uh, you know, it doesn't just, you just don't throw the seed out there and uh, expect something to come up and turn out to be a perfect product. It must uh, be covered with at least a quarter inch to a half inch of uh, soil to get good soil to seed contact for uh, maximum germination. How you treat and, and the soil is one of the most critical parts of right. success, right? And that's got to be true in the home as well. Right. Well, you got to <clears throat> amend your soil so they, it has to crop uh, the proper pH level. Okay. That's, people forget to uh, check that before they even seed. Uh, test their soil for pH, uh, the nitrogen content, the phosphorus content, and the potassium content. Uh, those are all the building blocks of, of the grass that needs to grow, you know. You can find great advice about lawn care at your local lawn and garden store. Just ask Chris from Alsip Home and Nursery. We offer quite a selection of, of soil testers, pH testers, uh, from simple ones that you put in a, a capsule and put a little bit of water in to more sophisticated electronic ones where you'd stick a probe into the soil and get immediate, more accurate feedback. Most people don't have any idea that, you know, the old just uh, take a handful and throw it out there, you know, uh, we, we get them the right tools to apply the seed evenly. If it's a large area, uh, a typical uh, fertilizer spreader can be set properly to dispense the seed over the whole lawn area. Or if it's a small area, just a handheld uh, crank uh, dispenser uh, spreader will do just great. I'm no grass expert, but I look at this, it doesn't look like a fescue to me. No, but it's, it's a... Uh engineered and grown by Jonathan Green to uh, have more characteristics of Kentucky bluegrass, more similarities, and, uh, but all the benefits of a fescue. I had to find out more about this grass seed. Turns out it's called Black Beauty. Barry Green is the president of Jonathan Green. It is a breakthrough. It is in the uh, turf type tall fescue family, okay. but it doesn't, it's not like other tall fescues. It's not, in no way a rough looking plant. Um, there's two different lines, that's the term we use, that were brought together. One was discovered in an oasis on the edge of the Sahara Desert, and the other in Marquette, Michigan. So one very hot area, one very cold area. And um, we found in the lab that the reason this plant survived in such extremes was because it had a, a waxy coating on the leaf that preserves the moisture in the plant. It's almost like dog breeding, right? You, you take a poodle and a Labrador and you get a Labradoodle and then you get this nice healthy dog. I mean, you've taken all the best attributes of these different lines and made it even stronger. That's a pretty good analogy, Lou. That's exactly what we're doing. We're, we're looking for the strengths from different lines or different germplasm and crossing them to create a superior plant. We may be looking for dark color in one plant. We may be looking for superior disease resistant. We're looking for leaf texture, better drought tolerance. And when, by combining these different lines, we hope to achieve a plant that's superior across the board. We've even been able to incorporate the invisible waxy coating. Yeah, talk about that. What What, what is the the, the purpose of that waxy coating? I mean, is that something that is actually uh, infused in the seed that it it just naturally occurs? We didn't engineer it. It was, it was put there by nature. It's an adaptive trait that Mother Nature put into certain lines of grass that we discovered. We were able to take that trait and move it into into other lines. Um, and it, what makes the uh, waxy coating so special, and by the way, the, um, so that uh, it's easily understood. If you take an apple and you polish it on your sleeve before you bite into it, you'll notice it shines. Yeah. That's an invisible waxy coating. Oh, so okay. a, a, a saguaro cactus has a, it's in nature already. Gotcha. But it makes it so that the um, plant can preserve moisture, uh, it lowers the ET rate, the evapotranspiration rate, and diseases don't attack the leaf directly. Wow, and that's nature helping the plant survive and you guys just sort of helping it along by bringing those things together. All the solutions are found in nature. You just have to look for them. We'll be back, but right now, take a look at this green piece. 